Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 285 of Proc Review. And we're back on track with our look at the various um, records made by uh, Pink Floyd alumni. That was a bit, bit, bit clunky, wasn't it? We're looking at their solo albums, you know, the people in the Floyd. Do you remember? I did start it, but then all these other things got in the way. I'm so organised. And today I shall be talking about, if you haven't read the title and description, Richard Wright and Broken China. Yes, this is um, second solo album, if you exclude the stuff he did with Z. Um, and it comes, you've got to remember, we'll give it some context, it came after The Division Bell. It features, well, Richard Wright, obviously. Anthony Moore, again, is somebody who was uh, used on The Division Bell. Uh, same with Tim, Tim Rennick, I think is also a, a Pink Floyd um, fr friend of the Floyd, if you want to put it. Um, also got Dominic Miller on guitars, Pino Palladino on the old bass, uh, Gabriel's old drummer Manu Cache as well, uh, Kate St John of on the oboe, and yeah, Shane kind of pops up as well in a couple of instances. Um, if you'd have if you'd have played me if you played me this album and not told me who it was, I'd be hard pressed to actually make any association between this record and Pink Floyd, because it's probably the least kind of Floyd sounding solo album there there is. I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, you got Rick Wright's voice, but at this stage, he, he's not necessarily sounding like he did on the Division Bell or on any of the other songs that he sung with the Floyd. Um, it's, oh, it's, it's, I found it really, really hard, I mean, I thought about this, it's, a, it's, it's not, it's not, it's a bad album, it's not a particularly good album either, it's, I mean, one, I mean, I, I mean, they say it's like prog rock, but it isn't, it's more down tempo, it's very different, everything, everything's in the minor, minor key, I think D, D minor, the saddest of all keys, yeah, goes up to 11. Um, I think a lot of the stuff is in in D minor. Uh, it, it's it chugs along at a, a, a very similar pace. I found some of the, the the drum loops and drum work quite interesting. The textures were the textures were were, were, were quite interesting because it, again they weren't necessarily sounds that you'd associate with the Floyd. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really just an exercise in, in, in misery. There are no, there's no light breaking through the cloud, really. I, I didn't think. I mean, it's all. I mean, yeah. Yeah, I mean, even when Sinead O'Connor turns up, she's not exactly, you know. She's even she's bringing a you know a downer. To the to the proceedings. I mean, it's it is fascinating though, again, because of, of all the of all the solo albums from the Floyd I've come across. He's not relying on those old, you know, stylistic, you know, tropes that you know you hear with Roger Waters or Dave Gilmore or even with Barrett. I mean, again, these people's work is so um, distinct that you know you can see. Where they are in in the Floyd, whereas this, it's almost like he's tried to do something utterly, utterly different. Also, I mean, again, when you when you think of the, the you know, he was the only like, classically trained um, member of the band. You don't get a lot of playing. It's not a lot of like keyboard playing. Not like when you hear him play on um, Dark Side of the Moon. You know, some of these piano work on that is absolutely sublime. But on this, again, it's it's more atmospheres than anything else. Um, I think there's there's one one moment where it, where you you could actually make comparisons between this and um, oh, what was it? 
uh, wish you were here, welcome to the machine, that kind of thing. Or, or was it, no, or was it, or was it, was it shine on? Oh, I don't know. It kind of just washed over me. It's, um, yeah, so, I mean, I, I, I didn't, I didn't think a, a lot of it, uh, in terms of it being, um, like a prog album. Though I did find, like I said, I found some of the, some of the drums and uh, synth textures, you know, quite fascinating because they, they were, they were you know, I wasn't expecting them. I wasn't expecting them. Um, I mean, I recommend everyone should give it a go. Though this is the thing. I think I think you should all give it a try because I think you'd be surprised by it. I think you go, ah, oh, that's different. That's interesting. I wasn't expecting that. I might again. I might think it might just be one of those records that you need to give a few a few goes at before it sinks in. But I just found it a little bit, you know, a bit bit ploddy, a bit ploddy, which is a shame because you know I want to like these records, but you know and again I think sometimes with the guitars you know some of the guitar bits you you, you, you want it to be um, David Gilmore you know they're almost hinting that it's Gilmore but it's not which is a bit of a disappointment you know but the bass work and I mean I thought the rhythm the rhythm work with Cache and Palladino was is probably is probably the one thing that makes it you know interesting for me um, again, and also the lyrics, it's all, you know, it's all pretty, it's all pretty miserable stuff. There are allusions to, I think in one of the songs there's an allusion to Barrett. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm not really, I'm not really giving this, I'm not really talking this one up, am I? Maybe it's because of the weather. It's a, I, I've not, I've not really felt like in the mood for this kind. Of, I mean, I've been, I've wanted more uplifting mood music. I think, you know, when when it's been a bit overcast and and rainy here, and uh, you know, when that happens, I put you know, more you know, jolly music on. And I think this just brought me down. <laughs> just got me down. Um, love the love the sleeve. Though. I think the sleeve's great. It's another it's another Storm Thorgerson sleeve, isn't it? And it's also mixed in Q sound as well. Uh, I listen to this on headphones predominantly. I haven't I haven't put it through the old um, speakers yet. Um, I don't know if that'll change my opinion. Maybe I should do a, I should do another series like um, um, prog review revisits where I go back to a record and uh, and uh, change my mind. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's it's an odd one. It's a, it really is an odd one, because I was expecting you know something a bit more musical, you know, a bit more uh, melodic, and it's really you know in places quite quite ambient, um, you know, in, in the in the in the synthesizer music vein, not in the Brian Eno vein, if you know what I mean. Um, in terms of a rating. You know, I think I'm going to give this two Knights of a Thousand Furry Toys out of five. That's two Knights of a Thousand Furry Toys out of five because, you know, it kind of just moves at a, a one, you know, a one, a crawl. It kind of goes at a one speed. Um, it's again, that's it. It's 60 minutes long. It's 59 minutes 34. And I think. You, you know, you know what I'm like. After 40 minutes, my brain starts to lose interest. You know, you've really got to be a, a strong. It's really got to be a strong album. And uh, yeah, funny enough, this was released on the yeah 26th of November '96, so it's almost a it's almost an anniversary year, isn't it? Um, but even though I've only given it a two, <laughs> he said, I do recommend that each and every one of you, if you're a Floyd fan, to go and pick it up and that you explore it. Because you might find it a bit more um, worthy than I did. I think. I think again, it's it is. I mean, I, I I say this about all groups. It's, it is fascinating to find out how these people, you know, fit together. And it is worth exploring for that. But it's not necessarily one I'm ne I'm going to go back to again and again. I might give it another try on on the on the big speakers to see if it if it um, changes my opinion. But. Um, 
yeah, it didn't really leave much of a, an impression on me. So that's it. Uh, my name's been Darren Locke, and there'll be another one of these along very, very shortly, because I'm behind schedule. I wasn't feeling myself yesterday, so I was thinking maybe I should start feeling somebody else. What do you reckon? The old jokes are the best. Uh, anyway, my name's been Darren. I've been talking about uh, Broken China by the late, great Richard Wright uh, of Pinky Floyd fame. Again, this is to get you all excited for Monday's release of The Endless River. And um, I think I think Barrett's going to be up next. Yeah, Barrett will be up next. And we'll leave Mason to the end. Yeah, I think we'll do that. Only one more, only one more thing to say. That is, prog on. <laughs>